Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Yeah, welcome to the WBNO Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. It is episode 100. Happy New Year. It's a new decade. And Jan O'Brien, we have reached episode number 100. What do we got going on today? In episode 100, after we have tested this three or four times, we're hoping this video comes out splendidly. And we're going to talk I... about, we're going to talk <laughs> about, a, we're going to review the, the last, not decade, but the last existence of WBNL podcast, some of the highlights, and I've got a, a cool thing to share with everybody today, which is a hundred business building ideas for 2020 and beyond. You certainly don't need all of these, but something on this list I hope is going to spark you to have some fun in 2020. I feel like getting this started today was a whole decade in itself. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> was. Oh um, my God. Fun times, good times. So, but the, the good news is we we uh, we think we have it down. We're going to decide whether or not this. We're using Be Live, okay? For those of you that might want to be playing with going live and using uh, a live streaming service, and we're, we need to see if the quality of the video and all that's going to work. So bear with us. Bear with. Bear with. In episode 100, um, we may be having to find a different way to record live. Uh, we're not recording live, actually. Thank God, because <laughs> well, maybe we are. Are we or aren't we? Oh, huh. guess we don't, I really don't know. know. That. All right. I don't know. We were on like the fifth attempt at this, folks, and uh, but oh. that's part of the fun, right? We we started out with live. I mean, we're not afraid of video. We we know what the deal is. So right. We all are. right. So uh, we're going to. I'm not. I'm. Uh, the thing is, Matt needs to be the 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 editor and the director of this thing because I clearly don't have it down. Okay. Yet. Here's the thing. I have a feeling I'm going to be a little bit like Anderson Cooper and be giggling this entire episode. Oh my I'm god. Got the, I've got the giggles. I got to say. Did you watch any of that? Oh, oh well. Yeah. Did you yes. see the whole thing with Sherry O'Terry and oh, the Barbara Walters thing? That was oh. the highlight. That was so funny. It was funny. Yeah, it, it's it's fun to watch him just get the giggles. And then but, of course, but no not, cord, but no cord and tissue uh, for the Rose Bowl parade. I was so. about that. You know, I was when I, the Rose Bowl came on parade, and, and the two years in a row, if you haven't caught that cord and tish, that was Will Ferrell and Molly Shannon. And I went oh. Googled it, Matt. I was like, hey, are they? Oh, the Rose Bowl's on. I got to go see if it's live streaming. And there was this whole thing about. Due to under, you know, due to various reasons they couldn't do it. I'm thinking it's because Pasadena didn't want them to do it. <laughs> I got that very sad text from Jan O'Brien on New Year's morning saying, "No cord and tissue day." Very unhappy face, cry. Yeah. Very so bad. anyway, but let's we're going to talk a little bit about our version of cord and tish, I think. So <laughs> yes, we are. Why don't we? We're having fun now. Oh, so no. why don't we go ahead and dive into the hundred business building ideas? I'm just going to share a couple of these ideas with you. You guys will be able to download them. They'll be over in our show notes at wbnlpodcast.com. Uh, and I know there'll be some great stuff in there. So we will, I'm waiting on that bumper music and I'm not going to screw this up trying to get that to come in, but um, let's jump into that. All right. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. I attempted to I attempted to screen share my beautiful list of tw of oh. uh, of a hundred things to do. Instead, I'm just going to hit some highlights, folks, because I'm having uh, issues issues with my computer now. All right, so let me go through a couple of them for real. All right, what I did was divide this up into thirty best practices, marketing, and productivity ideas. Then I gave you uh, twenty of my top tips for your database and sphere of influence. And then we, that will get, that will be 50, Matt. Then we will go to 50 ideas for video. So just a couple of the key, the five for best practices. So uh, my number one tip for the year is to develop your niche or target market to specialize. I talk a lot about this right now. Can you hear me, Matt? I can. All right, good. So, um, <laughs> you're, you're on the video here, so you can play along. <laughs> uh, play we'll get along. this down. 
just playing along with me. So we we do a lot with this, with niche and target marketing at our company. And it's one of the things I've been coaching for quite a while on helping people find what it is uh, that you're good at, or that you like, that you're passionate about. I really think that this will help you if you haven't really discovered what that is. It needs to be some, around something that you're passionate about. It, for you, those of you that have been in the business a while, it could really help rekindle, uh, you know, loving the business again. Um, as Matt knows and and as matt and i both know after 20 something years in the business um you can get a little tired of real estate right can you yes yeah so you have to redesign and re you know reinvent yourself um the next four things are the key tools that i always talk about if you're not already doing it i have to i had to make number two that you have to have a crm so many people i still talk to seasoned agents that i'm recruiting to our company um, don't really have a solid CRM that they're using, which is the base of their business. So I really think you have to have a client relationship management. It's how you manage your business. You have to have an IDX website with all the MLS listings so you can compete with Zillow and Realtor.com and get people off those sites. You have to have a home valuation tool. Um, people want to know what their home is worth. Um, you really have to have something that you can set an automatic report out. I also think you need a home search app, a mobile personalized app. These are the tools that you need. These are the tools of your trade couple others just while I'm on this, I'll just, I'm going to go to number 10. Use a pre-listing package. Uh, I think the way we do listings is change, which is going to come up next when I'm talking about getting the iRealEstate Estate Pro designation. If you have iBuyers in your market and they're in about 27, 28 markets, they're definitely here in Vegas. Uh, you, you're losing, you're going to lose out on businesses here if you do not get up to speed with iBuyers. And so I highly recommend iRealEstate Estate Pro. We had a great interview with Dan Noma a couple episodes, who's the founder right. of that designation. He's awesome. Learning so much uh, monthly from those guys, weekly actually in their Facebook group. Hey, Jen, did he go into how they're <clears throat> going to continue to expand? Because they really have expanded a lot over the United States already, and I'm sure they have huge plans for the future. But I don't think he talked about that during that episode. No, they they definitely have serious plans to get to the next level with, I think, just uh, continuing to – they're doing it the good old-fashioned way. They're going in, and they're backed by Fidelity National. Um, right. And they're in all the family of companies for Fidelity. And so they're going around the country doing the same presentations that they've been doing here and starting in Phoenix and so on. So, yeah, they're they're going to really continue to expand. They last time, you know, they were they were in Atlanta. They they were in places in California, actually, Bakersfield right. and all that. So I'm not quite sure where else they've been. It's lately. funny because before I actually heard his presentation, I really I, I wasn't really on. It's not that I wasn't on board, but I kind of was like poo poo to the whole thing. It's like, oh, my God, something else new. But after you really listen to him talk about it and how you can use it really in your benefit, even if you don't have iBuyers coming into your particular transaction, huge uh, game changer at the table. I definitely think it's a game changer. It's a game changer for the Vegas market. And I'm excited that we're on the forefront of that here at our company and at Home Connect America. And our agents are super fired up about it. We already have right. people. I talked to somebody yesterday that was in the middle. And what was really great just on this for a moment is uh, one of our agents was really being able to negotiate and work both with Open Door and OfferPad to get them more competitive because they both had written offers. So it's definitely changing. You have to stay on top of it. And I think it's it's going to be huge for the business. So that's a huge and it's a different way that you pre-listing package is getting ready for the meeting. But you go out now and I think the way we talk to sellers is totally different. Uh, we're calling it bring multiple offers. This is an offer presentation where you basically bring out cash competitive offers from these various i buyers compare it to a traditional listing have a net sheet which is always about the bottom yeah. line for the people and then let the client decide what they want to do that is in essence what you're doing uh, so i highly recommend looking at that which means you have to upgrade your listing materials and, and uh, do it have a different way you have to adjust to the market uh, I liken this when I was talking to that day we were talking to Dan to it reminds me of the short sale market that we had being in the beginning of that and making the changes. Those who change, survive and thrive. And those that don't are way behind the power curve and maybe, you know, lose out. So that's the huge tip uh, continuing on into 2020. And the last one I have on here is to time block. OK, so I have to tell you I'm doing this. I struggle with this. You have to try, you have to time block one to two hours a day to work on the business building lead generation. For me, it's recruiting calls and 
we've shared some stuff in previous episodes on accountability. Go back and check those things out. Um, um, my partner on my team here, Cosmo Morabi, he, he gave me an amazing tool that I'll, I'll be happy to share also for tracking your weekly produ production, um, you know, basically your follow-up calls and so forth. So that's the only way that you're going to get the business done is to follow yeah. up with people, right? That, that so, was a cool form. That's a way cool form. So the so those are the top 10 ideas there. And then the ideas for your database are just everything, uh, a recap basically of things that we've covered in previous episodes from the home anniversary card, calling people on their birthdays, doing the annual valuation. Every year we talk about the closing statement, which uh, those are all in our previous episodes where you, right now is the time that you send anybody that you sold a home to in this past year you need to send them a copy of the closing statement. We actually have a copy of the letter that you can download. Yeah. Um, and then the other one I'll just finish up on for the database is to send a monthly newsletter, a local business, spotlight a local business, focus on local things in your market. Don't go get those canned newsletters. Send a little time and create a great newsletter that goes out that's got value in it, that is sharing things about your community, lifestyle, and of course, real estate. And there's 50 I cool ideas for video. Uh, I've, we've done podcasts on that before. I had a we had a podcast in the past. I can't remember what number, but it was 44 ideas. I don't know if it was episode 44, but 44 ideas to uh, get excited about doing video. So I've expanded that to 50 ideas. Uh, you know, the only thing I'm going to say on this and kind of be done with it is. Uh, you got to use video <laughs> as we have They'll bring us right back to where we are right now. Uh, not be afraid. Uh, it can be a little quirky. This is our first episode back using video and we had a couple technical difficulties. We're going to see if we like it or not, or if we like a couple. Time. Well, all right. So anyway, the, you can download that whole thing over at episode uh, 100 at WBNLpodcast.com. So Matt, you know, what's interesting about the, I think the whole CRM idea is the, the really the first time that I've really worked as uh, really in depth into it is what, what we've been working on now for uh, home connect America, as far as messages to send out. And it's a lot of work and you can go down the yeah. rabbit hole on that, but I'm telling you that it is a, uh, it's a must and you have to take the time, carve out the time to learn how to do it and to do it right. Otherwise there's no reason to have one. You know what I mean? And Janice yeah. talked about this ad nauseum, right? Over, ad over the, the past, yeah. <laughs> over the past hundred uh, episodes, because you, you have to have one and you have to have it set up correctly and you have to actually work it. And if you do all the work on the front end, it's going to be smooth sailing all the way through. And then you can just adjust and tweak and add things along the way. But it's uh it's a lot of work, but it's going to pay off in dividends in the long run. So that is well, a huge, huge part of your business. So let's Best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Let's talk about our last hundred episodes, some highlights and, and some things that you thought were awesome and, and what did you enjoy or the things that you want to cover today. But first, before we do that, I want to say I've got to get a more interesting background. I Every time I look at our video or we, because we do this kind of live chat live every, almost chat every day all yeah. the time and i'm like god i love his whole office setup over there it looks it's totally my style because of the books and everything so it's this is just time. really blue screen greens it's green screen that's just <laughs> a fake thing behind <laughs> it. anyway uh yeah i'm in the office uh because again starting with technical challenges today for some reason i don't have internet at my home so there's oh. that <laughs> What do, you, what do you know? So, Jan O'Brien, when we started this podcast and we were doing episode one, did you ever think we'd make it to 100? Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I, I, did. Knew, I, did. I, knew, I knew. I knew. I knew we would do it because I think we found our groove and we liked it. And it was and it became something for me over the past however many, well, 50, 99 episodes, 100 episodes weekly you know it's probably a couple of weeks longer than that because we've had a couple best ofs and so on sure. i just i it's a highlight of my week because it's not it's it's a fun thing to do it, it's an opportunity for me to it kind of makes me create the content that then we then repurpose for our coaching for our agents and we're doing so much with this content it's just awesome 
It's funny because really when we started WBNL coaching back four years ago, a little over four years ago now, we uh, created a program called WBNL 52. So every Monday, a tip was sent out to all of our members. And we did that for two full years until we thought, huh, maybe we should be doing, we should turn the tip into a podcast. And that's how the whole thing really kind of got started. So we actually have four years worth of coaching tips that we've been doing every week for, uh, for four years, which is, a, you know, it's amazing. And I really can't see this ending because it is a lot of fun. It's the highlight of my week as well. It is. And we use this a lot to, to give it back to our agents. It goes to all the people that are still members of WBNL, which by the way, we might as well throw a little shout out to uh, anyone who is not a member of Home Connect America. So if you're in the Las Vegas area and you want to have access to our entire coaching catalog and all the other coaching materials, plus so many other benefits, that's all incorporated into Home Connect America. But if you're listening from outside of Vegas um, and you want to be able to have access, what we have a cool special running right now. Uh, the, it's, it was 197 annually to be a member of the Wanderers Club. We now have that at 197 for lifetime access, but for the rest of January, we're continuing our cyber special, right? That's and right. You can get it for 99 bucks. So if you're not part of Home Connect America, uh, if you're listening outside of the Vegas area, if you're in Vegas listening and you're um, not interested in joining our company, where you'll get all that for free, you can still access the, the training materials. So we'll put that in the show notes for anybody that might be listening. We're also running special on our team builder program, which is also another benefit to being part of our company, but we'll, that's our commercial. So episode 100 brought to you by WBNL Coaching. There you go. All right. But so, uh, go ahead. I digress. No, I was just going to say, throw it back to you on what were the highlights for you in the, in the past year? Yeah, I think, you know, when 100. I... Uh, you know, the, the coaching tips were all fantastic. And I love the way you, you, you orchestrate them. I love Jan, the way that you actually uh, have a series, they all build upon each other. And uh, the, there are 99 freaking awesome tips there that it's going to help anyone grow their business in the wandering Zen segment. I was going over it last night when I uh, was just kind of working on the show notes for today. And it kind of amazed me. My, my, my idea was to kind of go back and, and list a hundred things to do and a hundred places to wander. But as I was looking through all of our different episodes, we have been all over the world. We have uh, traveled to so many national parks. We have uh, uh, consumed a little IPA along the way, mm -hmm. uh, visited theme parks across the nation uh, and had a bunch of really incredible guests. And it was just, so I, I just thought, you know what, well, let's just kind of talk about Let's just talk about some of our favorite Zen episodes. And I know you and I have already talked about this, and I don't know how popular this was with our viewers, <laughs> <laughs> but it was sure it fun for us. It was sure fun for us. It was a year ago, um, actually a year and a half ago yeah. on Jan's birthday, January, actually January, June 4th, we took a trip to Disneyland. Actually, just went to California Adventure and downtown Disney and streamed live all day long there oh at the park uh, from the first glass of champagne until until I don't know how what number of beer it was at the bowling alley there in downtown Disney and, that and it episode, was when the my golden knights were in the Stanley Cup finals which was uh, their first year and they're doing really great right now they're in the top of their division it's awesome but you know what I listened to that whole episode again because I just hadn't listened to it in a while and Okay, beside it being super fun and we're having fun and we were doing it remotely, you are so good at describing what the heck is going on. So when we were joking about Cord and Tish, but we, I actually thought we sound like Cord and Tish at that again yeah. because I, I'm, it was it was the Pixar Pier wasn't open. The whole joke about this episode was I wanted to go see all these things that they were in the middle of opening. Ariel's Grotto was gone, but you go through all the details and I'm listening to it again. I'm like, wow, you are like a Disney file who should have their own Disney podcast and well, by the way speaking of that you need to put a link in the show notes to matt was a guest on nostalgia nostalgia a great podcast one of your favorite podcasts right how long have those guys been podcasting they are up to episodes 573 wow. i think or something like that so they've been they've been doing it for almost 11 years it's amazing and they uh, are fantastic you need to put a link to that i know you posted it maybe on social but your interview with those guys they were in they were just having so much fun talking to you because of your experience at disney they were they were geeking out with you which was cool it was it was a lot of fun I, i've never guested uh, uh, on a podcast before and it was i was nervous as hell 
hell. It was weird. I don't know why, but it was uh, it was nerve wracking. But it was a lot of fun. So thanks for bringing that up. But we had, we we had a great time when we went for your birthday, and we've done quite a few episodes yeah. actually on Disneyland, the things that are going on there. And I I do love Disney. I'm also a big Universal fan. And like I said, all of the things that we're talking about in this segment are going to be in the show notes. But there's a what I think was a great episode on the Wizarding World of Harry Potter yeah. Universal Studios in Orlando too. One. So if you are um, you know theme park fans you know make sure you you check those out but the national park uh yeah uh, that's my favorite ones are some of my favorites i mean the sequoia and 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 yosemite of course and you did a fantastic one talking about um when you went to sedona which isn't a national park but still a uh, beautiful to place to wander yeah it's just you know what incredible what incredible places. And and we had a couple special guests on our podcast, Dennis and Sue Nespor, where we did a couple live broadcasts right from the cool. King River down in Kings Canyon. And those are some of my favorite too, because you could just tell, I you, you know, when you get together with someone, just like Jan and I, when we were there in Disneyland, when when the when my wife, Sweet Pea, and I are uh, with the Nespors, we get to laughing. And there's some of that laughter when I listen to that. And like I said, this is personal. So I don't know what, you know, what our... Uh, our uh, listeners think about that, but when you hear people laugh, it's contagious. So uh, those are some of my favorite episodes too. Not to mention, I, you know, I'm a huge New York fan. Uh, it, we did a New whole York City, big Apple ones were good on me too. Huge series on New York, kind of just going through all the different things from museums to places to shop, to, to pizza, to, you know, places to stay all of that in New York. So those were, those were really fun podcasts as well, but just getting back to the guests for a minute, we had um, so many guests that have come on uh, the show. Uh, Caprice, uh, uh, who is actually my hairstylist. Thank you very much. Not this morning. <laughs> Not this morning because I had to get up too damn early this morning to try to make myself look good for this. But Caprice did a incredible trip, a uh, rafting trip down the Colorado River. And we did a three-part segment with her. That's one of my was, favorite ones. Episode, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So if you haven't heard that one, go back and listen to it. Actually, Caprice and I got together at a um, nature center here in Anaheim Hills. So we were recording that together outside. And it was really fun to listen to that. But I loved listening to her because she is so connected to nature and the way she talks about wandering and how it really rejuvenates her her well-being and, and yes. her life. It was just really, she was very inspirational, I thought. It was really cool. That's you know, funny. we had... Yeah, we had Natalie Ortega on, a, a, a woman that uh, both Jan and I worked with back in the uh, back in the olden days of um, real corporate America jobs. She. Uh, quit her job and moved down to uh, uh, New Zealand for yeah. a year. And she came and talked about how she was wandering down there. Fascinating stuff, right? Just the beautiful uh, uh, topography and the geography down there. And just to hear her stories about really just uprooting and, and, and going out on her own for an entire year was amazing. And I really admired her for that. That was a really cool thing. You're one of our first guests that we had on the podcast was one of our first episodes. I think it was episode four, David Squire there yep. in Nevada, who went to lava, not lava beds, uh, fossil beds, I think was the name of that. Um, yep. uh, they're in right that. Out, yeah, right outside of uh, Las Vegas. That was a, a fascinating story, too. We had an author, Jen Marie, who uh, we used to also work with, who at the time had just uh, finished her second book, has now actually published her third book. So. Wow. You know, live authors uh, interviewed on The Wanderings End, too. And my goodness gracious, Lorena Bryan, uh, you yeah. know, gave us some insight in um, down in Florida, down at which, what did she actually go? There were, there were eagles and our oh, yeah, no, that she were was being talking hacked. about Yeah, she was talking about Honeymoon Island and That's right. um, yeah. those, uh, the state parks that are down there in Florida, which are one of my favorite places to go when we're down there as well. Yeah, so. That was really cool. Yeah. Diane uh, Corbin uh, from uh, Boulder uh, City Queen. Yeah, she, the, the Boulder City Queen gave us a really fascinating uh, kind of rundown on Boulder City, which I didn't know anything about that. And it was really cool to hear about that. I haven't been back there yet, but I'm really looking forward to, to going back there. Our awesome friends, Juan and Claudia, did a segment on just wandering helps how it helps your creativity, which is Honest to God, the right. truth. I mean, seriously, when how you about, get out, how about the three downtowns of of Southern Nevada? That's that was the other one. one. That was, and not only was there were those. Uh, that was a fun podcast. It was awfully fun to actually do that. We did, did we do all of that live. We did. We only we did the one we, in Henderson live. 
We I don't think we got to downtown Summerlin. I think I just talked about it, but we did Bad, downtown Henderson, right. and then we were downtown Fremont Street down there. Yeah, that was fun. It's just really fun to have the, the special. Oh, and Nick Micheletti, he came on. He did. Uh, he talked about the you know the slopes. I think it was Colorado. Yep. He was in, or maybe it was Utah. Yep. I don't really I remember. Just saw him doing some more. He's been out doing his snowboarding. Yeah, he just celebrated cool a, stuff a he birthday, did. I believe. Yeah, it's yep. it's it's crazy. So we've had some really great guests on on the show, and and then of course when Jana Bryan does any wandering, she comes on and she uh, gives us a lowdown on what she's been up to too. So we've done a lot of great stuff, and it's been a lot of fun. And I look back on that, I think to myself, we have uh, we've covered the gamut, and that's why in the show notes we're going to list. I'm going to put a link to every single one of the wandering zins in there, and obviously you can just go to the show notes and go to the episodes, but you have to go through each episode to find that. I'm going right. to give you a link right to the zins right in there because I think that's if good. you are looking for some inspiration in 2020 for things to do and i'm telling you it was it was a wider eclectic wandering collection than i really thought it what well, i remembered it being because he really so how are we going to top that in the next 100 episodes uh, we got to go gonna... to new places i think we have to make the commitment to go to new discoveries new places you know a lot of times in the tips i'm i'm re bringing things up that are things that you have to you know you have to can't talk about it once it's stuff we're going to talk about every year but the, the challenge and the fun in coming in 2020 is what, where, where does the podcast take us, right? Right. Uh, who well, are we going to talk to? I think that we need to, well, first of all, we need to get more industry leaders on because it was really, it's great to have that. When Dan was on talking about IREP, that was fantastic. And like I said, he really converted me from being, a, okay, here's something else, to a true believer in what IREP is, is, is how how impactful that's going to be to your business. Um, and then, you know, it's always fun to hear about people that uh, go anywhere. Oh, yeah, oh, my friend David Townsend, my goodness gracious, he took yes. us through the channel for crying yeah. out loud. That, that was really, yeah, that was really cool too. Uh, so, so we need to do that. And I think that you and I, Jan O'Brien, we should commit to a quarterly IPA tasting okay, uh, in the wanderings. And now that we're doing these on video, it will be even more fun. Oh my God. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we are, we have to be continue to be the connoisseurs of the best IPAs that are out there. And I'm telling you, I'm ruined forever to not, I can't drink anything other than an IPA when I have a, a beer and I, if it's going to be a beer, it's going to be an IPA. So I'm down for trying. Yeah. And, and I, and a West Coast IPA because yeah, we, sorry. here's the thing. We were back not in New, New York. Not a New England style. New York is getting a little bit better, but it's still predominantly New England style IPAs. And Goose Island is just, I don't even, wouldn't even consider it an IPA, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And they, it's all over the place down at, back in New York. And we were at some little Irish pub when we were back there over, <laughs> over, uh, uh, Thanksgiving and there was just no option for anything. And, Oh, I know where we were. We were at, um, at John's pizza down in Greenwich village, which has got uh, the oldest pizza oven in New York city. We have it on one of our podcasts. So go back and listen I knew, to that. I think I, you've talked about that before. <laughs> anyway, they have, they don't, they have a very, it's not a full bar. They just have wine and beer and their beer selection is really more like, Hey, grab a Pabst. So, <laughs> um, but so I forgot what, what sweet pea had. She just, she's like, I'm not having that. I call it gooseneck. Cause that's kind of what I think it tastes like. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Goose. Not sponsored by Goose Island. <laughs> um, anyway, the uh, she refused to have that, so she had something else. And I had a Goose Island, and I I'm gonna say it 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 works in a pinch. So there you go. there you go. I'm gonna give it a little mini. I'll, I'll give it a. You, know, you have no like, other choice than it, have exactly. It. It's, it works in a pinch, or it's like, especially like wine. I mean, you drink, you start drinking better quality wine. You cannot go to a cheap wine, right? Nope. Same idea. So Do you remember drinking Andre Champagne? Do you ever drink Andre uh, yeah. Champagne? Yeah, and I just laugh at that if I see it in the in the store. <laughs> okay, well, I haven't seen it in the store. We were buying champagne for New Year's Eve, and I'm like, oh my God, Andre is still around. And now it's $7.99. <laughs> Uh, from a dollar ninety nine, because I remember spending a dollar ninety nine on that back oh in my God. Blah, 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 whatever year that was. You are you are totally you know placing anyway. yourself. It's all I funny, know. but you know what? This has been amazing. We we're going to continue the the journey and and hopefully grow the audience and and see what see what video can do for us and and make it about quality balance. Like remember, we started the podcast with this whole where real estate and real estate and reality meet. We're always going to talk a little bit about uh, something to help you with your business or your mindset or productivity, keep you inspired and motivated in your business. And I think a lot of these tips apply to anybody, not just in real estate, even though I talk a lot about, obviously, we are a real estate 
company and real estate coaching company. Um, but you know, the Zen thing is fun for me and I, you know, we've got to stay balanced. I have to stay balanced in this new year and not always be working. And so to me, making some commitments or setting some goals for, uh, to me, it's two, two new parks again in, in, I want to get to two parks in 2020. Okay. Which so, two? You haven't picked out yet? No, I mean, I, I would love to go to the Redwoods actually. The Redwoods is one, uh, haven't been there. I, I'd love to be able to go back to Sequoia or Yosemite, to be honest. I, I mean, those are, those are, those are my two favorites so far. Uh, but I've been to the ones here in, in Utah, so I'm not quite sure where else to go. We Maybe had a sequ- taking a trip in May and I'll be up in Asheville. So there might be, my niece is getting married. Maybe there's something I can do around there. So I don't know. We had, a, we had a Sequoia trip planned next week. Uh, yeah. for three days, but we had to cancel it. For one thing, the weather, it's pretty snowy up there right yeah. now. There's a ton of snow. My uh, sister-in-law was going with us and she actually came down with the flu. So we had to postpone that. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm making a commitment right here. I'm putting it out there into the universe. I talk every year, and I'm not kidding when I say this, every year for at least the last 10 years, I said that I am going to the Channel Islands in the spring and I am freaking doing it this year. That's all there is to it. I don't know why. It just always just eludes us. But Channel Islands is definitely on my list Where, that's where's the only, all this? it's outside of santa barbara so catalina okay. is actually one of the channel islands you know but the actual state park or excuse me national park is up closer to santa barbara oxnard no, that's area your backyard you gotta go i know that's what i mean it's one of those well it's always the debate it's like do we go up there and spend a couple of days and go over to you know to, there's no place to stay on the islands but just to stay up in santa barbara or you know up there or do we just make a day trip of it i don't know whatever but it is in the backyard and it's a cry and shame that we have well, you're going to get there, no doubt. That is a plan. All right, sounds good. All right, so is that going to wrap us up for episode one? I 100? think that I just feel kind of lost on how to even close or do anything when we're on this video because it just feels so different than when we're just sitting here in our pajamas doing it, <laughs> <laughs> doing it uh, without the video. So, yeah, I guess that's really going to wrap it up. All right. So what happy else? new year, happy new decade. We've got some great content that we put out the last couple of weeks on. And I've been doing it, Matt. I know you're not into that, but I have taken the material that that we've produced for everybody. I'm actually walking my talk. And I did my review of the decade over the last weekend. Amazing, an amazing experience to do that. I'm just telling you. I, I And the only way I could do it was reviewing my photos. And I went through right. all my photos because I, you know, because I sent you some photos from some memories back in like 20, 2014, 2013, something like Good that. Times. It was good times, but uh, it really is powerful to look at all that. So I really encourage anybody, there's still time, it's the beginning of the year to do that review, but then to also really set your intention and your focus. And my, I I pick my focus word. My focus word for 2020 is self-mastery. Okay. Self-mastery. I didn't really like the word self-discipline. I don't like that word discipline. So self-mastery, same, you know, synonym for it, but, but meaning this is the year I really want to master everything from my mindset to the activities to healthy living and taking care of myself and all the things that I always say that I'm going to do like my daily routine. So self mastery is my focus for the year and all the air and all the areas of my life. I think that that sounds brilliant, Jan O'Brien. And of course I do not have one. Well, I encourage you to, I encourage you to to share on next week's episode, what your intention and focus is for the new year. See, it's not about saying goals. Of course we know, I don't believe in resolutions. We always talk about that. I do. I definitely have set my intentions and my goals for the new year, but it's all built into this five and 10 year plan and the vision for the next decade. So I'll leave you with that. Find Find your focus, get excited for the new year, and we'll see you back next week with some great new exciting content uh, to help you stay balanced and to get up and get out. And remember everyone, be forever wandering, but not lost.